So good day to all of you. So this is your teacher for the National Service Training Program 2. And our topic for today is about service learning. So I know that you are all excited to um, deepen our understanding about service learning because this is one of the advocacies and main content of the subject NSTP 2. So the learning objectives of this topic, so at the end of this chapter or topic, the student should be able to, one, explain how service learning leads to effective community intervention and active participation. Two, outline the different strategies applied or adapted in community services and intervention. And third, formulate programs or campaigns that reinforce service learning and community involvement. So allow me to show the outline of this topic. One is the characteristics of service learning, what service learning is not, service learning theory, the legal basis of service learning, the higher education institution on service learning, and the benefits of service learning, including the guidelines and procedures. So here we will be talking about Yes, you are right, the word service. So service learning provides students the opportunity to work with others, gain insights, and acquire skills. The application of their knowledge by formulating appropriate solutions to the problems in the communities. So when we talk about service learning, you will be able to think of the solutions or alternatives of the problems that you have identified in your community. Service learning also renders services and perform acts such as one, analyze the effect of natural disasters and use a kit, monitor the effects of poor nutrition and lack of exercise, study the complexity and diversity of wetland to eliminate invasive aquatic species, help the struggling local nonprofit organizations cope with difficult economic conditions. Let us now discuss the characteristics of a service learning. First, it brings good, substantial, and practical results for the participants. And it also promotes cooperation rather than competition where the skills associated with teamwork and active community involvement are developed. And in other words, these characteristics of service learning promotes cooperation and unity among individuals for the welfare of the community that needs help and solutions because if there are certain problems in those particular communities by which the students of MSTP have identified as their local or beneficiaries. In addition to that, service learning also gives appropriate rather than simplified solutions to problems that seriously affect the community. Here we are not just simply talking about solutions, but we analyze and critically determine the most appropriate solution to that particular problem. So here, textbooks will not matter that much, community engagement activities will be valued most. Also, characteristic of service learning provides real life experience because we are talking about immersion. So this offers opportunities for students to develop their critical thinking skills and learn how to identify relevant issues in the community. So the characteristic also of service learning involves the giving of students a deeper understanding of concepts and real life situations in the community through immediately observable results. Which means that through the understanding of service learning, it becomes a more significant experience for students leading to their emotional and social development and above all cognitive learning. So we're done about 
service, let us now proceed to, can you guess the next topic that we will be discussing? Yes, you are right. The word cooperation. So what service learning is not? So we, are, we will be talking about the things which are not associated or related to service learning in general. But most people have misconceptions and they thought that it's service learning where in fact it's not. One, an episodic volunteer program. It is not service learning. It's not an episodic volunteer program. That is for sure. Um, second, an add-on course to an existing school or college curriculum. So what do you mean by episodic volunteer program? So from the word it's an episode, so it is not sustainable. Service learning aims for sustainable volunteer program for a community um, to be helped and to be having a solution to their immediate problems. A service learning is not an add-on course to an existing school or college curriculum because this is outside the the existing curriculum of the school because it goes beyond the the, the back so this a particular um concept um goes beyond outside the box okay so service learning is not about lagging a set number of community service hours in order to graduate so we do not just simply count the service hours but what we we do not mind the hours but what we are actually concerned of um, are the attainment and the achievement of our goals to help the community so it's not about compensatory service so here this is purely volunteer a uh, volunteerism which means that we do not expect for a monetary um a monetary return so the um, compensation or compensatory service assigned as a form of punishment by the courts or school administrators. So service learning is not about that. So service learning is only for high school or college students. That's wrong because um, you could involve out of school youth and those who are not in schools anymore, even professionals, you could involve them because this is a community um, community effort in cooperation as I have earlier stated it's the main thing that we need to develop here this is not one-sided that is beneficial only to students or the community but it benefits the entire sectors of our society in general now let us proceed to service learning theory what is the purpose of discussing the service learning theory is for us to understand the rationality and the wisdom behind the service learning. So according to Morton and Trope in 1996, experience is the foundation of learning and the basis of learning are the different forms of community service. So it's very important to really um, immerse the students to the community for them to have idea of what would be their purpose in life why they want to be future professionals, to be guided as to their vocation and calling for their lives. So it is a form of experiential education wherein learning occurs through cycles of action and reflection. So for me, it's a, a very big opportunity for each of you to be involved in the service learning because you will really realize what is your purpose in life and you will be having an idea how lucky you are to be in your current status and this would eliminate the insecurities that you have yourselves because you will be able to reflect and you will be able to develop self -grat um, gratitude and you'll be thankful about your your life So what is the legal basis of service learning? So under Republic Act 8292 or Higher Education Modernization Act of 1997, this law reiterates Section 2, Paragraph 1 of Article 14 of the 1987 Constitution by declaring that the policy of the state is to establish, maintain, and support a complete, adequate, and integrated system of education 
relevant to the needs of the people and society. So as you can see here, the policy can be attained through the HEI strategy of function. So HEI stands for Higher Education Institution. So at the top of the pyramid, we have the academics, which pertains to teaching and learning. At the, at the left is research and at the right is extension, which pertains to community service. So we need this three uh, functions of the HEI have to be attained and have to be achieved. And the only way to achieve this is to involve yourselves in what we call service learning. Now, let's talk about the extension or the community service. So, according to Tariman in 2007, the university's duty to the youth is to make them literate and functional so they can make good decisions regarding the problems affecting their health, families, and duties and responsibilities to the community. So, in other words, all of us, especially you students, have the responsibilities not only for yourselves and for your families, but most of all, to the community in general. Now, let us try to guess the next topic or concept that we will be dealing with here. Excellent. You got it right. We will be talking about learning. So, what are the benefits of service learning to the students? One, we have increasing their understanding of the class topic. Second, gain first-hand experience, possibly leading to a future internship or job because of the connections that you will be developing along the way. Third, question or defend values and beliefs and have the opportunity to act on values and beliefs. Third, a fourth rather, develop critical thinking and problem-solving skills. Fifth, increase their knowledge of diverse cultures and communities because through immersion, you will be able to socialize with all people from different walks of life. Six, learn more about social issues and their causes. So by learning the social issues and their causes, there you will be able to analyze and determine what would be the possible solutions for this problem since you already know the causes of the, these issues. Seventh, improve their ability to handle difficult situations and become open to change and become more flexible. So as you can see, we have handful benefits of service learning to the students here. Eight, develop or enhance their skills, especially in the areas of communication, collaboration, and above all, leadership. So if you really want to develop your communication, your ability to collaborate with others, and particularly your leadership and management, you better engage to service learning and you gotta take this subject seriously because this is one way ticket for you to become a better communicator, a better collaborator, and a better leader. Ninth, test out the skills, interests, and values required in the potential career path and learn more about their field of interest. Tenth, connect with professionals and community members who will also learn from the service learning program. So this is what I am referring to connection connection that you don't have as of this moment but later part because of your engagement to service learning you will be able to establish connections that would help you grow in your professional personal and even social aspects in the future you could also grow your professional network in relation to the 10th benefit whom they can contact later for career growth you could also be encouraged in joining public service or social organization. Okay, those are the benefits of service learning to the students. Let us now proceed to the benefits of service learning to the faculty members or to your teachers or instructors. One, it could promote interactive teaching as well as reciprocal learning between them and their students. Second, it could provide new concepts and subjects that will enrich the class. Because let's accept the fact that not everyone can be provided to a single or a particular textbook. So learning in an actual way is 
the highest form of learning that education could offer. Third, open up new areas of concern for research. Fourth, motivate their students to engage in active learning and be exposed to varied teaching styles. And fifth, enable their students to learn more and further develop themselves. Number six, it could increase their enrollment by giving the proper motivation to highly engage and active students. Seventh, enhance the leadership potential of their students. Expose their students to networking activities with active faculty members in the other disciplines. Promote quality relationships between them and the members of the community or the institution which may facilitate collaborative endeavors. Tenth, offer first-hand information or concepts and opportunities for community involvement that will help them understand and resolve issues. So those are the benefits of service learning on the part of the faculty members or the instructors. Now let's proceed to the benefits of service learning to the community partners. One, receive additional human resource assistance that can expedite the achievement of organizational goals, inspire a higher level of enthusiasm, perspective, and energy, improve the organization's pool of volunteers, enhance public awareness regarding significant issues confronting the community, and ensure future support for the organization. In addition to that, it could also make students well-informed about the issues in the community and enlighten them regarding common misconceptions. It could also prepare the youth of today, particularly students, to become tomorrow's responsible community leaders. Establish strong networks with partners in other organizations and agencies. Gain access to the other resources of the university and strengthen collaborative ties with its faculty members, students, and staff. So those are the benefits for the students, the faculty, and the community. Let us now proceed to our last topic, which is understanding. You get it right. So the significant and helpful steps in effectively implementing service learning. So in this topic, you will be guided as to the steps in order to achieve an effective implementation of service learning. First, you need to assess the community resources. Identify um, what is or what are your resources are. Second, you have to establish partnerships and linkages. In this way, this could fill the gap or it could also help you in the limited resources or limited community resources that you have assessed or identified in the first step. Third, you have to indicate the specific learning objectives in the syllabus of the subject. Then initially plan on the chosen program that you want to implement in the community that you have chosen. You get a plan, the details of that program, and make sure that you are able to determine each detail of the program. Next, look for funds because after you assess, um, it's already given that the community resources are really limited. That's why they have problem and you are there to at least um, support and give solutions to the problems that they are having in their community. You have to implement and manage the program that you have um, identified earlier. And organize reflection activities that will help you guide and process everything that you have um, done already for the community. And after that, you have to assess and evaluate the program if you were able to achieve your goals and objectives. And after that, you have to celebrate your achievement. And I would say congratulations for that achievement. So these are the guidelines and procedures for you to be strongly supported uh, for your future endeavor, for the community that you have chosen. So under the preparatory stage, you have to make sure that 
you students and your faculty members are responsible for the selection of community. The communities with existing memorandum of agreement or MOA with the school are the most appropriate choices. So the LCCD office or the NSTP office have already identified communities and they already have the memorandum of agreement. So you don't have to worry about it. So if you will ask which community you have chosen, you have to check it with your teacher or faculty if such community has an existing MOA or memorandum of agreement. So the faculty members must submit a letter of intent to the college dean through the chairman of SLP. So the faculty member will write a letter of intent and request for permission to conduct a SLP to the selected community. So if you're gonna ask what is SLP, that service um, learning program. The students who will join must secure a waiver from the Office of Student Affairs to be signed by their parents or guardian. And the faculty members must conduct a classroom briefing about the program or activity. Stage two or letter B, the implementation stage. So everybody is required to wear an identification and t-shirt and observe proper decorum while in the community. Moreover, you have to respect everyone there and avoid unnecessary actions that could create conflict with the members of the community or promote discrimination or bullying. So as, much, as much as possible, you have to wear your proper values all the time. Second, the students and faculty members shall cover their respective transportation, communication, and meal expenses during the period. So this is one of the obligations that you will be having in, in involving yourselves in a community service. So a little bit of financial time and effort. The faculty member or the group leader shall take responsibility for all communication and coordination with the partner community. So they are also in charge of ensuring the safety and security of the students during the activity. The college dean or the program head will conduct spot monitoring or follow up students involved in the SLP to determine the actual current status of the program. And in case the faculty member will be absent, he or she must ask permission from the college dean to find another faculty member as a substitute to supervise the students. The faculty cannot just simply be absent and allow the students to conduct the activity without any presence of a bona fide faculty member of the college. So let's proceed now to the post-activity evaluation stage. So the students must submit a narrative report with pictorial documentation and reflection paper to the faculty member as a proof and as their final output. The faculty member will evaluate the student's performance and narrative report using the assessment tool designed for the activity. So you don't have to worry because the teacher will be guided by the certain rubrics or criteria in order to eliminate any biases and to come up with an objective assessment with your um, outputs. Third, the college or university through the chairman of the program must conduct an exit conference with the community beneficiaries and leaders to assess the SLP. A certificate of SLP completion shall be um, issued by the college or university upon written request of the faculty member in charge. And the college shall issue a certificate of appreciation to the cooperating community upon the completion of the essay. So finally, what we'll be expecting to everyone is development. Thank you very much for your time and listening and do not forget to please subscribe and like the video as a form of support for this channel. Thank you very much and God bless us all.